guys so this is just a video on how to set up an MPPT in a mini off-grid solar system like this also go through the other bits of the, of the system that you need or you can have um, so this this is just powering my tiny little garden shed um, we've got a fan running here at the moment Uncle Russ over there keeping watch um, tools and all that sort of crap um, as you can see it's pretty sunny and it's a hot fucking afternoon um, solar panels up there in the roof so that's bringing the power in that's a standard 260 watt residential panel or 265 so there's cables coming in from that panel down they come in to this circuit breaker circuit breaker i just use as a switch so i can just turn it on and off as required i like having that it should it's very good to be able to isolate your um it or your different bits of equipment or circuits add that you could um, comfortably use a little toggle switch like this in this uh, in this exact situation i mean this is a couple bucks whereas one of these is 20 plus dollars um this can only handle as you can see 12 volt 30 amp um or 24 volt 15 amp i think it's good for so it should be right in this situation but um if you had a bigger array pumping out 60 plus volts or anything like that it, this wouldn't wouldn't be suitable comes in goes into the mppt so this is the baby you want to know it's a four this is a 40 amp 1224 volt it's a 24 volt system I've got set up here. Essentially, you get you can pull double the power or have double the size of the array with the 12 and 24, uh, sorry, 24 volt to 12 volt. So we're only pulling 4.8 amp and that is giving us 130 watts of power. This thing can handle up to like a 1. Point, a 1.5 kilowatt array, I think something like that. Um, so they, they can handle a lot of power. Right, the next part from this, essentially, it'll solar comes in, regulates, and then gets put down to the battery. These two cables here are coming out, and eventually they're getting to the battery. We've just got a few detours, and this is maybe some of the things you do to set up like a system like this. Um, as it comes out, it goes through a fuse. There's a 40 amp MIDI MIDI fuse, um, which is a very important part of the system. It's a must have, um, and it's not being correctly used here, but I didn't have a holder for it, so. That's how it's set up. It's okay. It should be pretty safe. Um, yeah, so your fuse should always be less than the current carrying capacity of your cable. Very, yeah, that's very important. Basically, your fuse, if there's a fault or a short circuit, it's not gonna, you can't, it's not gonna burn your cables out or catch on fire because the fuse will break first and cut the circuit. That's basically their job. Uh, next thing we've got here is a buzz bar. The buzz bar is just a way of distributing power. So I want to put a 12 volt system in here. I don't have to fuck around too much. I can just lug a cable, unscrew that, bolt it on and run my cable up to that area or wherever you want. Um, yeah, it just makes it, it's easy and it's a safe, solid connection to distribute power. So as it comes out, we're getting down to the battery, but we're going to the next section, which is the inverter. It's 24 volt, 2000 watt inverter. Those two cables, I've just sent them off onto both positive negative lug of the inverter. And then you can see from there, we step up cable size. It branches out and goes down to the battery. For the next, the two big things you see hanging out here, uh, that's an oscillator switch to the batteries. So it enables me to turn the battery on and off. And it's again, <clears throat> very important, very helpful to have something like this. Yeah, it's in, a, in order to isolate your battery, it's, a, it's actually a must in off-grid, um, mini off-grid systems, according to Australian standards. Over here we've got a shunt. So this is this device here is just it's measuring the power in or out of the battery. Again, it's a nice to have. It just tells you a little bit more about um, what your power flow is doing. It gives you the voltage and the percentage of your battery. So up here, this is the readout from that shunt. Um, Tell me my battery's 99% full. We're at 26.8 volts, and if I go there saying it's plus there's 2.8 amps going into the battery and we're actually we're pulling 4.4 off the panel which means there's obviously some at the moment going to this and to the fan you can have a look there fans pulling 34 watts this thing loses like 20 watts inverting from dc to ac um yeah so that's that's a shunt nice to have it's not mandatory you don't need to have one um and that's cheap shunt power meter then we come down um to the battery bank so we've got two 12 volt batteries wired in series these are life po 4 but 
the most important part down here is the fuse again so that's a fuse over there it's a hundred amp again a hundred amp midi midi fuse and that's protecting this all this heavy cable all the way up to the uh wet to the inverter because that the inverter is the thing that's going to be pulling all the power so yeah that's uh an overview of the, the system and how you can use it like i've just got a board here mounted it to the wall and set up all of this uh all this cabling and works if i was to do it again i'd probably put these cables in behind the board so you can't see it um you protect these things so that i know i put a, should really have a plastic cover or something on there to protect those cables should be a cover over these things um and neaten it all up but i left everything out so that i could show and explain the system to people it's, uh, Here's an overview uh, of all the components. I've done up a little diagram here. You can use that if you if you, if you need. The main items over here. A little note that your fuse always should be less than the cable current capacity. There's two things to check with cables. The one's the CCC. The other one's the um, voltage drop. Um, other particulars for this, uh, I'm using I think two AWG or 33 mil squared cable for a 2000 watt inverter at 24 volts with a 100 amp fuse. Up in this section, I think the smallest bit of cable I'm using is, I think that's four mil squared and a 40 amp fuse. This, sorry, this other section here is just an MT50. So that, that's just a, an accessory to the charge control and it just gives a bit more information than the screen and allows you to change the charging parameters because this is set up for LiPo 4 batteries, um, you need this to change the settings on these controllers and set up a user profile for lithium potassium. There's another whole video on that as well.